Well, good afternoon, everyone. Rod Cullerton. Just wanted to give an update. We are, well, currently on the fringe of a political limitation in South Australia and West Australia. I just wanted to um, share with you. Um, we're all here currently uh, doing our paperwork, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about this because uh, since I arrived, to, say good day, everyone. Hello. Yeah, and we're all travelling throughout the Commonwealth. We've got everyone down there having tea or dinner. Or dinner. Now, look, I just just wanted to um, let everyone know that we met with the sergeant and we um, basically uh, went across on behalf of everyone to sit down and sort this out because they um, were a bit sensitive when we first got here but uh, we've been able to amicably um, work a plan. And first of all, um, I just wanted to take we took the police through it um, and we stood on Commonwealth jurisdiction but we all said that we had a reasonable excuse under section uh, 162 of the Public Health Act and we sort of went through it a bit um, and a lot of people probably would know this but I just thought I'd run through it again and I've written it out. Um, uh, so um, the issue that well, the position of the WA Police is to say, well, you must be vaccinated to, uh, to come into Western Australia. Now, we've taken all genuine steps, and it's not the WA Government, in a sense, saying this. It's, it's you've got a contract with the, the WA Police. So, um, so we basically said in the interview, uh, well, discussion, and it was a nice little discussion, how may it be the power of the government to override voluntary consent because all these people need to consent and some people may be vaccinated, who knows, who cares? Um, at the end of the day, that's our private uh, information. But um, so we went through and said, well, uh, asked to uh, where the border, um, could the police point to the border? Well, a little bit hesitant on that and uh, we showed them clause eight, we pulled out the constitution uh, because that is our right, free free right to travel right through this frontier. Uh, and sort of basically said, look, I understand that certain industries, you know, McGowan has made it um, so-called mandatory. I mean, the High Court of New Zealand said mandatory vaccination is, um, is unlawful. And we all understand that, but these premiers tend to have a different view on that. But anyway... And we basically said, well, OK, if that was the case, we have to be double vaccinated uh, or take a procedure. Uh, it doesn't have to be any. How does that apply to me when I'm travelling? I'm not actually at work. And um, this is what we said to the WA police. So we were travelling. Uh, we didn't see any requirements from any boss or whatever. Um, but then we obviously we pulled out the Constitution Clause 8 and 123 and showed them and um, you know, get them, and then to ring their legislative assembly, ring the parliament, ring their lawyers, ring their higher ranking officials, whoever they wanted to ring, and ask what act has overridden federation since federation was granted in this great country, uh, how uh, point to the act that has overridden that and has brought us back to a colony and placed a state uh, over section 123 of the constitution which is a political limitation so you can go and uh, i mean we're only all just doing this because you know everyone aren't we we're all we're all bound by clause five of the constitution aren't we and we have all our rights under the commonwealth that's what our founders and forefathers did where everyone agree with that yes. and uh everyone agrees that they have it Yes, everyone agrees that they have a reasonable excuse yes. and that reasonable excuse is um, I've given them high court cases now and those that reasonable excuse is to hang on to a very important high court case. You can look it up. It's called Breen v. Williams, HCA 1996, uh, 57, uh, 186, CLR 
I mean, we'll go right through it. We're giving this to the to the WA police, who at the end of the day hasn't been able to uh, give us the controlling mind why we have to um, enter into a permit when we have a right to uh, travel right across this frontier without any impediment. And you can go to your um, you can go to your passport. So obviously uh, McGowan is. Uh, a little bit slow on uh, reading this sort of legislation. But anyway, um, so what we've been able to do is to keep, can, um, you know, just to basically say to them, we've travelled over state soil to access their right of government um, and, uh, you know, and told them I am in the process of taking this matter to the High Court on the Section 92. I know... Um, I know Clive Palmer took that case uh, earlier, but that was more to do with taxation. This one's more to do with um, the right to travel um, and the effects of federation. So um, now further all, furthermore, we actually said to them, um, where is the biosecurity order of the health, the health order in my name compelling, compelling me to go to a location to be vaccinated or PCR tested. Um, the WA police were unable to provide that as well, so that is a position that we've taken. And we've also um, relying on section 40, 74, 500 of the Biosecurity Act requiring consent to override st state uh, law, which is uh, an inconsistency, which is found at section 109 of the constitution. So. Um, if uh, there's an inconsistency, the Commonwealth law prevails, uh, overrides any state legislation. So, uh, pretty much so, what we were able to do then, we were able to get a hard copy. So, I want everyone to um, <laughs> provide their hard copy of their so called conditionally, conditional, conditionally filled out. Um, permit, which obviously is not required because Federation said we could travel right throughout the Commonwealth freely, but, uh, freely, but in the event that, you know, just to um, be seen to be lawful and proper and doing the right things, uh, we have um, conditionally, well, we've been able to get a hard copy and enter into a contract with the WA Police on the provision that they haven't been able to provide the control in mind. They don't want this to be too much of a political stunt out in the middle of nowhere and simply uh, getting... Uh, so we've all conditionally filled it out, haven't we, without waiver of our rights under the Commonwealth. We all understand the effects of Federation, don't we? Yes. Uh, and we're all law-abiding Australians. Uh, we love our country subject to the Commonwealth and we all understand that we're, we're subjects of the Queen. Uh, we're not citizens under Australian law, so we never consented to become citizens. Uh, they just sort of say, all happy with that, guys? Yes. Okay, so what we're also doing is we're putting all the case law in there. So uh, one of the um, best ones is one I'll be using for my case when I go to the High Court, and that is... Um, Gratwick uh, versus Johnson. That's where a lady um, basically took it all the way to the High Court and the, they agreed, the High Court agreed, uh, you do not need a permit to travel through this one self-governing colony. Um, all the borders are 12 mile out to sea. So I just wanted to uh, say, and the police were a lot better once we got here, weren't we? Did you find the police how have you found the sergeants and that, guys? They've been more accommodating, they're coming up. More accommodating. Yeah, okay, which is great. So, um, like I said, I've been talking to them uh, in confidence and um, certainly with the cameras off and having a real good chat. And I sort of, I feel sorry for the WA police because they seem to be doing the dirty work of this McGowan government and they do understand that, um, you know, there's issues how there may be a border uh, out here in, um, between WA and South Australia when Clause 8 of the Constitution, once Federation was affected, 
um, and the people ratified and uh, obviously came back under the Commonwealth, or well, we ratified the Constitution. Uh, they, the, uh, we, they became states, and um, there you go. So, Clause 8, 123, giving them all the case law. Can't get better than that. So, we don't have to go back to court because the High Court's already uh, determined these cases, and um, everyone is fully aware of them because I have provided it to them. And um, we're all going home, aren't we, guys? Yeah. <laughs> All right. Home, kids. <laughs> yeah, we got some. You've got some sheep to feed, and, and so how long? Act, it, how the long? Emergency it, act. Yeah. They have to prove there's an emergency. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, the 2005, and they couldn't no even. Emergency. They weren't able to um, provide us whether that um, act was a crown act, passed pursuant to law, and overcome our section two three of the constitution, whereby all people or WA Constitution Act. Um, 1819, oh no, 1887, isn't it? What's the constitution? Anyway, 1889, I think. It's late in the day. We've been travelling uh, some long, long distances there today. Is no emergency. So, um, yes, until they can show that's a lawfully passed Crown Act and receive royal assent, well, one has to go with our constitutional guarantees, and that is that uh, any law that has not received Her Majesty's. Um, blessing, so to speak, uh, her royal assent, and this is the one per clause two of our constitution, um, is of no legal effect. So there we go. Okay, so we'll um, put all the cases in there. It's really pleasing that you guys have done all your homework <laughs> and uh, been able to... Um, you, hey, look, we can you show where the police have actually given us a um, piece of paper? So here it is. Uh, so everyone's conditionally filling it out, but they've given us an extra piece of paper to have a annexure so we can write down all the High Court cases and uh, really make it official, have it on record and certainly do the right thing. So other than that, uh, how's everyone feeling now? All right, and how many of you are going to vote for GAP at the next election? Right, hey, thank you. And this is the failing of uh, other senators that are in the parliament. They should be doing this. They should be out here. Uh, they should be providing the law. And they should be keeping these premiers, uh, pretending premiers, in tow. But they just tend to think they they, they don't have to. But uh, if they'd reached out here, it's a lot easier. They're in a position, a lot stronger position, perhaps we are. But anyway, at the end of the day, um, this is the law. The law makes the claim. Uh, we've done our proper due diligence. We've gone there. We've spoken to the police um, at great lengths. So they can't say we're abusing the law. We're only just telling them what the law says, uh, which they... Can we honestly say, did the police actually know the law, guys? <laughs> no, we're very concerned and they don't know. They get thrown in the deep end and they just say that they're doing what their boss tells them to do. Uh, we were able to turn around and so, and that's part of the reason why we need to go back into Parliament and start fixing, you know, getting the, taking the sting out of these magistrates' uh, tails, which these sorts of things really uh, affect people's lives and certainly are a disruption and it's preventing me from going home. So um, that's it. But everyone else, um, everyone else is happy to uh, travel freely. Is that right, guys? Yes. Yes. Yeah, no, nah, good on you. Okay, well, I'm signing off here and um, having a quiet beer and just will keep everyone updated and thanks for your continued support coming live from you out at a political limitation that McGowan claims to be a border, uh, but no one can find it. In actual fact, if we were to go 20 metres that way around a little gravel track, uh, there's no fences there, guys, that we could... But no, we'll do the proper thing. We'll go through that imaginary what? gateway over there and uh, keep McGowan happy so that he doesn't have any other excuse to sort of um, try and, um, you know, make our lives a bit uncomfortable. But other than that, we're all doing well. We're all having a beer and just thought we'd share an update with you. God bless. Good night. There we go. 
Hang on, I think the beers might be flowing tonight, guys. <laughs> See you later.